My name is Horacio de la Iglesia, and I'm a social uh, professor at the University of Washington. Um, currently, I'm the chair of the Society for Biological Rhythms conference that is taking place now at Amelia Island. And next to me is uh, Dr. Jean Duffy. She's an associate professor at Harvard Medical School, and she's one of the chairs of one of our symposiums. And um, How are you, Jean? Uh, Good. So I wanted to ask you a little bit more about your symposium. What was the theme of your symposium? So the theme was circadian rhythms in psychiatric disorders. OK, and what is the link between circadian rhythms or clocks and, and psychiatric disorders? So originally, um, the link was differences in sleep in a lot of different psychiatric disorders, either more sleep than normal, less sleep than normal, differences in the timing of sleep. And we know that sleep is controlled, at least in part, by the circadian system. So we suspected that there were links mm -hmm. there. But as the research has progressed, we now know that there are actual changes in circadian rhythms in patients with psychiatric disorders. And we also know that some of the clock genes are involved in some of the psychiatric disorders. Mm -hmm. And what are the <clears throat> approaches that your speakers uh, are using to study this link between psychiatric disorders, mental health, and the circadian system? Yeah, so uh, one of the nice things about the symposium was we had speakers who were using many different um, model systems to study psychiatric disorders and circadian rhythms. Um, so one speaker is using zebrafish, and he has zebrafish that wow. um, can both model depression and other zebrafish that model ADHD. Mm -hmm. And so with zebrafish, because they're small and you can study many of them um, quickly, um, he can look at manipulating different um, genes in these fish and see how that impacts the symptoms of either depression or ADHD. And he can also try treating them with different kind of compounds right. to see how those compounds might affect the, mm -hmm. the symptoms of those disorders. Right. That's super interesting. Another one of the speakers is using mice as a model system. And um, he was looking at how um, light um, impacts, the, impacts mood um, and how people are feeling. So we know that um, light can actually um, impact patients with depression, not just seasonal pr depression, but, um, but also um, bipolar. Um, and it can even impact the um, mood of healthy, pe uh, healthy people. Uh -huh. um, and so he's studying the brain circuits that are involved in how the light actually makes those impacts on mood, and whether that involves the circadian system or some of the structures that are part of the circadian mm, system. Okay. Then uh, one of the talks was about um, a study that was done in women with uh, PMDD, which is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Um, and those women have very strong um, negative symptoms during the luteal phase of the menstrual cycle. And so it was looking actually at circadian rhythms in those women, both when they had the symptoms as well as when they didn't oh, okay. have the symptoms, to understand what role the circadian system might be playing in that disorder. And then the final talk was actually from a psychiatrist who is doing studies in hospitalized psychiatric patients. Mm -hmm. And um, he's doing these um, really interesting studies looking at where within the hospital those patient rooms are and how that um, contributes to the length of stay for those patients. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that's been noticed is patients in south or east facing rooms that get a lot more light have much shorter hospital stays wow. than patients in north or west facing rooms. And so now he's actually working on designing a new hospital to optimize the lighting conditions to try to help these patients um, uh, you know, have shorter stays and get better sooner. And then he's also following them once they are discharged from the hospital to make sure that their home environment is really conducive for um, for their mental health. Well, so I guess natural light is, is good for your for your mental natural health. Natural light is good for your mental okay. health, exactly. So, so any uh, for what you say, this link between circadian sleep and, and mood disorder has been out there for quite a while. But um, any new things that you saw emerging from uh, the symposium in general that you think are uh, worth highlighting? So I think one of the things um, that is very interesting is initially 
I think we sort of believed that the changes in sleep or the changes in rhythms were due to the symptoms of the disorder. Mm -hmm. And now there's increasing evidence that disruption of sleep and disruption of rhythms may actually trigger some oh, of the okay. symptoms of the disorder. So that may be one of the kind of, uh, someone in someone who's predisposed uh, to have one of these mental health disorders, um, those kind of disruptions may actually trigger the first onset of symptoms. Okay, so I guess pre uh, preemptively you, you could try to, I mean, if you know that you have a propension to be depressive or, or any kind of mental health issues, uh, having an organized circadian system and sleep would help it's not gonna, getting into it. Exactly, okay. exactly. So, and, and I think it's also, it's sort of very bi-directional because then once you um, have the symptoms, then that feeds back okay. onto, the, onto the circadian and sleep symptoms. Excellent. Well, it sounds like a super interesting symposium. And thank you very much for chairing it. And um, sounds like there's uh, great research ahead of us on that link between the circadian system and mental health. There is, and the, the speakers were uh, really great. And, and I thank you for letting me put the symposium together. Okay, thank you.